Thank you. Um, my name is Frank Marzinski. I'm with Sip Smoke Saver. We're a single malt scotches with cigars and chocolates. And I hope you all had a chance to try the chocolates and single malts downstairs at the table below. I also have with me here tonight Tim Wong from Rocky Patel. We also have a very special guest here tonight, Richard Patterson, uh, master blender for the Dalmore. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, my name's Tim. I'm uh, with Rocky Patel Cigars. Um, so, yeah, I've gone through that. So here's an illustration of it. Um, the fillers on the far right. Um, generally, a roller will take between three and four leaves. They'll sit at a table. They'll have the blend in front of them, and they'll take those pieces and put it together in the filler. The binder, the middle piece, they wrap it together. They'll put it in a mold for anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. Once it's uh, come together as a piece, the wrapper is then applied. So those are the three layers of your cigar. Um, so we have an illustration of a tobacco plant. Generally, a plant grows to about six or seven feet tall. Um, they're divided into three parts. You know, from uh, the bottom to the top, they call it the volado, the seco in the middle, and the, the lejero on the top. Um, generally, each part provides a different purpose. Uh, the Volado is the bottom one-third. They're smaller leaves. They tend to be mild in flavor, and they usually are used for filler. Um, the Seco or the Visa, which is in the middle third of the plant, tends to be a little bit larger. It gets a little more sun. The more sun the leaf gets, then it's going to grow bigger in size. So in the middle of the plant, generally um, that provides flavor as well as uh, it, goes, it can be used for binder, wrapper, or filler, depending on how they grade that leaf. Um, and then the top part is called the Lejero. That gets the most sun. The leaves grow the biggest at the top. That provides mostly strength. Uh, sometimes can be used as wrapper, but mostly it's also used for filler as well. So a blend generally consists of leaves from all three portions of the plant. Um, a plant that's six or seven feet tall will have what we call primings. So on the bottom leaves, they'll call it the first priming, and they'll go up from there. So a plant could have seven, eight, nine different primings on a leaf. And that helps us with the blending. So what we'll do is, if we have plants from different uh, countries of origin, we'll take a fifth priming leaf from a Nicaraguan plant in Jalapa with a fourth priming from Honduras. That's how we make sure the blends are consistent. That's how the leaves are labeled. So when they're picked, they're grouped, and they're labeled by where they're part of the plant and what priming they come from. So, and uh, so you can see how um, that divides up uh, the lajero usually in the middle because it provides the strength. It's the thickest leaf. It's the slowest burning leaf. That's generally why we put it in the middle of the cigar. Um, the seco is around it. Generally, it helps for combustion. It adds for flavor. Uh, Volato is the same thing. And then the wrapper is usually applied on top. And the wrapper is usually either seco or lajero. Um, as you guys well know, tobacco is grown in many different countries in the world. Um, Rocky, we use tobaccos from, you know, 12, 15 different countries, but you can get it anywhere from, you know, the United States, Cuba, Dominican, Nicaragua, Honduras. And pretty much if they can, you know, they've got a warm climate, they can grow tobacco. And so we uh, have a lot of different materials we use to develop a blend. Um, some countries of origin have some characteristics. Uh, Dominican Republic tends to be a milder, smoother tobacco. There's, there are exceptions to this, but generally mild, smooth. Honduras is a little more dry, a little more earthy. We tend to use Honduras a lot more for uh, filler um, and for flavor. Nicaragua, which is one of the more uh, trendier wrappers at the moment, is uh, spicier, more peppery. Generally, Nicaraguan cigars tend to be stronger. And then uh, Cuba is a, you know, it's a, a strong tobacco as well. And we, the term I'm using is barnyardy. It has a specific flavor that's kind of like um, a sweet, uh, a sweet horseshit, for lack of a better term. So um, that's. There isn't a good word for it, but it's, it's a very unique flavor. But none of us would know about that. None of us would know about that. So, yeah. So we try and, you know, with these characteristics, we develop our blends. We try and make something that is, uh, you know, both strong and complex. So one of the misnomers in our business is that uh, when you say full-bodied, it often means just strength. Actually, strength is, is a separate scale from, from uh, body and complexity. Um, strength is basically how strong that cigar is. It's uh, the power in the Lajero. It's also a level of nicotine you get from, uh, from smoking that cigar. 
Um, when I say full-bodied, I mean the range of flavors you're going to taste in a cigar. So a full-bodied cigar to me will change flavors on you three to four times during the course of smoking it. So you can actually have a cigar that's going to be mild in strength, but full-bodied, but we don't have that very, very rarely do you see a cigar like that. Generally, you know, full-bodied, full-strength is what you're going to see. Um, so what we're starting off with is the 1999. It's a vintage Connecticut. Um, the wrapper is aged seven years. We call it a true Connecticut wrapper. That means it's grown here in the United States in the Connecticut Valley, Connecticut seed. Um, we also call it Connecticut shade. What that means is when they grow it, they'll tent entire fields with cheesecloth to prevent the sun from coming in. That keeps that wrapper nice and golden. It makes it mild, smooth, and creamy. If we took that cheesecloth off, you're going to get a much thicker wrapper that's going to be spicier and a much different flavor profile. Um, the binder wrapper features Nicaraguan and Dominican. Uh, it's well balanced. The Dominican provides that nice, smooth, creamy nature that you're tasting. The Nicaraguan adds just a touch of spice to make it a more balanced cigar. Um, and then the second cigar this evening is the Renaissance. Uh, the Renaissance is we're classifying it as medium to medium full in strength. It's also a medium to medium full bodied cigar as well. Um, it's primarily Nicaragua and Honduras. That's generally Rocky's base blend. We use almost Nicaragua and Honduras in every cigar we make. Uh, it's one of his blends that he absolutely enjoys. Different proportions for different blends for different purposes. And the wrapper is a beautiful Ecuador Sumatra. Uh, Sumatra is the seed, and we actually do grow it in Ecuador. Ecuador Sumatra produces a spicy, sweet cigar. So when we get to that particular cigar, you're going to taste a nice citrus finish on it, but it's also going to be peppery. Question? Correct. So we'll have it, uh, we buy tobacco from all over the world. Our factories are actually in Nicaragua and Honduras, so they'll be shipped in to the different areas uh, that we need. So if we buy Dominican tobacco, it gets shipped to Honduras or Nicaragua, depending on what we're doing with that particular tobacco. We have two factories, so we actually have Honduras and Nicaragua. So different blends made in different factories. So. Correct. All of our cigars are wrapped in those two factories. So why we're here today is to, to see how different cigars pair with the different whiskeys. Um, a milder cigar like the Vintage 1999 generally is, because it's so smooth and creamy, will take on the characteristics of what you're drinking with it. Um, generally, I mean, I'll let Frank talk to this a little bit more. That's his expertise. But a smoother, more milder whiskey will probably pair better. Something with more strength, with more smoke, is definitely going to overpower that particular cigar. In fact, it'll probably take on a real smoke. It'll dominate that particular cigar. When we move to the more medium full-bodied cigar, that's going to stand up better and it'll probably pair well with the more you know, medium to higher end whiskeys as well. And when we transpose the two, because I'm going to ask you guys to smoke both cigars simultaneously, you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. So we're going to light up the second cigar in a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to pass it back to Frank then. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, the first thing I'm going to say to you is that uh, Frank and Tim, they're very, very dedicated to what it's all about. But what you want to do tonight is to make sure that the pussies out there know what you've come to on tonight. And what I'm saying to you is you've got to make sure you sip and savor and you see the cigars with these wonderful whiskeys. The first thing I'm going to say to you is this is a Capita nosing glass. And what I want you to do is to make sure, make sure that you nose it properly. So what do you do? First of all, you take that whiskey, you swirl it around, and then you put it all over the carpet. Because you've got to make sure, you've got to make sure that whiskey is absolutely clean. So the first thing I'm going to say to you, first thing I'm going to say to you, if I ever see you holding a glass like this, and if I ever see you holding a glass like this, and if I ever see you nosing a whiskey like this, I'll come down there and I'll kill you all. Because what you want to do is to make sure you always hold it at the bottom. You swirl around and you say, hello. Then you go back and say, how are you? And then you go back and say, quite well, thank you very much. You've seen these cigars, the filler, the wrapper, the binder. They all take time to put together. And of course, the single malt like Dalmore is no exception. We distill the whiskey, and then we, what we do is we wrap it round with not just any wood. This is American white oak from the Ozark Mountain Range of Missouri, but more importantly, from 
Hall Oloroso from the Jerez de la Frontera, Sherrywood. What you're going to see tonight is 60%, 60% Sherrywood to 40% American White Oak. But when you smell the whiskey, come up and say hello. Then you come up and say, how are you? And then you come up and say, quite well, thank you very much. So with these two fabulous cigars, you don't just smoke them quickly. You sip and savor the lovely tobaccos that have been put together by these great people here. Same with the whiskey. What you want to do is to smoke the cigar. Smoke it, smoke it. But take the whiskey. This is what you must do. You put it in the mouth like this. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm, mm. Then you swallow it. So you keep it on the top of your palate. Where do you keep it? Where do you keep it? Top of the palate. Then you keep it underneath your palate. And then you put it back up. You keep it at least for 12 to 15 seconds. 12 to 15 seconds. The longer you keep it in the palate, the more you'll extract the flavors. Same with these great cigars. You smoke them, you hold them, and then you'll extract these flavors. Tim mentioned about citrus. Citrus will come towards the end. That's why smoke it, but hold it long in the palate. Can we do this together? Right. Get the, light, before you do it, light up the second cigar. Light up the second cigar. Have you all got the second cigar? Have you all got the second cigar? Make sure you take a big draw. Mm. Take a big draw of the second cigar. See the spicy, succulent, central notes, and then towards the end, see the citrus fruits. Do that one more time, one more time. Take that cigar, keep it there, keep it there, keep it there. Then take the whiskey, you got the whiskey? Take the whiskey and hold it. I want you to hear that mmm, mmm, mmm. When I go like that, that's the top, that's below, and then top again. You ready? One, two, three. Mmm, 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 and let it go down. See the whiskey, hold it long there, sip it, savor it, keep it long. But then smoke the cigar once again, keep it there. And see the combination, the combination of these body, sensuality, orange, marmalade, spice, cedar wood, and these citrus notes in particular will come back again and co will combine with these wonderful, wonderful cigars. Frank, well done. Well, well, we're not done yet. I'm hoping that's... Um, well, actually, we, we have that one. These are um, a, a premium, ultra-premium line of Dalmore whiskeys. And these have set all records for price and sales. In 2002, the one on the upper left was a 62-year-old that sold for over $40,000. $40, I won't go into British pounds. I can't make the conversion. In the middle is the Dalmore Oculus. That beat the previous record in 2009 and sold for about $50,000. But they topped that all last fall with the Trinitas, which were three bottles, two of which were sold for over 100,000 pounds. That's about 150, $160,000. So with, a, with a, um, a history like that in the depth of the cast, you know that the Dalmore is a good whiskey. Now I had the distinct pleasure of trying the cigar malt before it uh, went out of existence. And I was on a um, trip of a lifetime to Scotland. I was sitting out on the terrace of the Kergelicky Hotel 
which if you love single malts and you go to Scotland, you have to go there. It's got over 600 whiskeys, and it's just an amazing experience. I sat out there with a Cuban cigar, so every time I try the Delmore, I reflect back on that experience, and it comes through every time. As far as the flavors, what we're looking for with the Dalmore and with the um, Renaissance is that rich, it's almost like an orange sherbet with chocolate is the, uh, the feeling that I get when I try that. There's pepper, then creamy vanilla. The vanilla in the cigar transitions into chocolate, coffee, and uh, other tones, a nuttiness that comes through. And that goes perfectly with the, um, with the uh, Renaissance. The coffee and nuttiness just adds kind of a depth of flavor to that. So really what we're all about is enjoyment. And um, if I can promote our website does that. It pairs up different flavors of cigars with different flavors of whiskeys. And that's been, that's been the direction that we've taken. So I could open it up to questions if you'd like. And we have one back there. This gentleman is asking, why did we drop the cigar malt? I'll tell you right now, we haven't actually. We did drop it because, unfortunately, over here in America, many people thought that the Dalmore cigar malt was being matured in tobacco leaves. Yes, that's the reason why. Also, people thought, people thought that because if we don't like cigars, they won't like the cigar malt. And also people thought that we're being insensitive towards that. But can I just assure you, as from last week in Las Vegas, it's back again. We have got now the cigar malt reserve back again. It's been relaunched. Yes. Only, only this time it is 70% American, 70% uh, Oloroso to 30% uh, um, American White Oak, and you can see that it will be shortly in America. Just give me a few more weeks, and we'll be back here. But the Cigar Reserve, to complement these great cigars you've seen here tonight, will be back once again. So I can assure you. So the tobacco plant is actually something that's not an annual or a perennial. They have to start from scratch every time they plant it. So you'll get a seed the size of, it's really almost like the size of a thumb, a, a needle point. And a little cup will be at like 10,000 seeds. So basically they plant them in the ground in nurseries. As they start to germinate, they get the little plants about maybe three inches in size. That's when they move them from the nursery into the fields. It takes about four to six months to actually grow the plant to uh, proper uh, size to pick the leaves. And then once they do that, they will plow over the fields and they'll let that field go fallow until it's time to plant it again next year. And they start the entire process from scratch. So. And uh, every part of the tobacco plant gets used too. And they pull the leaves off, the stems are actually taken out. They're sold to perfume companies. They're sold to other places as well. Everything gets used as part of the process. The sap from the plant gets used in the construction of the cigars as well. That's what they use to seal the wrappers. So every part of the plant gets used as part of the process. Well, I think if you've had a, tr a chance to try both cigars with both whiskeys, you'll see that the light one doesn't really hold up to the Renaissance as well. It's kind of overpowered, and that's where the Dalmore comes in. That richness and complexity really goes well with that richer flavor of cigar, especially the Nicaraguans that give a little bit of spice. The lighter, the lighter cigars are going to, you want, you're going to want a lighter whiskey to go with. If that's all the questions, I guess let's just enjoy the cigars and the whiskeys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Actually, just before you go, Frank, uh, can I just abuse your body for a minute? Because uh, you mentioned uh, in particular, uh, I've, I've managed to manage to come from another class and I managed to bring something very special. So, so if you like to hold it there, because it's not very much left, but if, if you like to just, just, just bring it up, smell it, smell it, and then hold it, keep it there, keep it there. This is one of these very, very rare whiskeys. Frank, if you like to take a big mouthful and hold it long in the mouth, 
That's it. Keep it there. 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 Just keep it on top of the tongue, underneath the tongue, back in the mouth, and then just put it and swallow it and take a big deep breath. Because uh, this whiskey is not 10 years old, not 20, not 30. This is the Dalmore Sirius, and this is $60,000. $60,000, the most expensive thing that Frank will ever have in his mouth. <laughs> okay, but, uh, but can I just say, <clears throat> this is all about keeping these tobaccos together. If you take, if you take Nicaraguan coffee, and then you take a lovely Dalmore, uh, 12 years old or 15 or 30 years old, and then take a bit of chocolate, and then take one of these fabulous cigars together. You combine them together, what do you get? A multiple orgasm. That's what it's all about. Well done. Well done, Frank.